Is there an electric tractor in your future? Well, today we're going to talk to an expert, so stay tuned. This video is brought to you by the Lube Shuttle and all the other fine products located in the Tractor Mike Fun Store. Use the link in the description to click into the Mike Store that has some of the most fun and creative products that are available for tractor lovers today. Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in tractors, post-frame construction, or homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in in the conversation? More and more of us are driving electric cars these days, and it's only a matter of time before we start thinking seriously about electric tractors. Steve Heckeroth is the CEO of Select Track Tractors. Steve, welcome to the channel. Thanks for the opportunity to have me on the show and talk about electric tractors. Now, before we get started too far, how about telling us about your background and what got you to this point in your life's journey? I was brought up in, in the LA area in the 50s when you couldn't see across the street because of the smog. And in high school, I ran track and cross country along the freeway and ruined my lungs. Uh, by the time I got to college, I decided to dedicate my life to finding alternatives to fossil fuel burning. And I started by uh, building solar homes. I was educated as an architect. And then I, uh, when I figured out how to do uh, solar homes, I decided I'd work on electric uh, cars but I found that the battery weight at the time was the biggest problem with electric cars. So I switched to tractors because tractors need weight for traction. So they're actually an ideal electric vehicle and I've been building electric tractors for 30 years now. Can you give us an overview of the uh, models that you're presently producing and what new models you've got coming down the line? We're now producing two models and offering them for sale in North America. Uh, one is the e-utility tractor, which is about a 40 horsepower equivalent, and it'll do any utility operations with a category one three-point hitch and PTO. The, the other one is the CET. It's a compact electric tractor, smaller, very good for uh, things like hobby farms where you don't need to use it all day, um, and greenhouses where you don't want to have emissions in the greenhouse, and horse arenas. We also have two tractors in development, one a, a much larger um, 70 horsepower model that will be used for vineyards and orchards and larger agricultural operations. Um, that tractor will have a front and a rear three-point hitch, so you can put an exchangeable battery pack on either the front or rear, depending on where you have the implement. And then we also have the eFarmer, which is made for uh, row crop farming applications where it has three hitches, so you can see the mid hitch, you can see what you're doing in front of you. Um, and then it has a front hitch that you can put a bucket or a reaper on, and a rear hitch, which is just for regular uh, category one implements with PTOs. Best applications are like harvesting and transplanting, where you're going at slow speeds, and you can go all day or longer um, using an electric tractor, and, and they're very quiet, so, uh, and they don't produce any pollution, so um, people working in close proximity of the tractor don't have to listen to a diesel idling all day long um, in harvest applications and planting applications. Uh, the pollution and the noise can be very um, hazardous to people's health, whereas with electric you don't have the noise or uh, the pollution. So those are the best applications, but um, any, any category one uh, implement will fit on these tractors. And it has a 540 PTO, so you can run uh, just about any category one implement. And uh, they can be used uh, for shorter times, like uh, three to five hours with the PTO. They can disc for five to six hours, um, cultivate for um, six to eight hours. So. 
there's a, a lot of applications that uh, you can run most of the day on. How is the PTO driven? Is it driven off the main motor or does it have its own motor to drive the PTO? Well, the PTO on the tractors is driven through the transmission. It's usually about 20% less than the, the uh, pulling torque of the tractor. Um, so the, the CET behind me would be equivalent to about a 22 horsepower at the PTO. The utility is more like a 30 horsepower at the PTO, 25 to 30 horsepower at the PTO. The E70 will be more like a 60 horsepower at the PTO. And the E Farmer will be a 25 horsepower at the PTO. What kind of implements are practical to run from the PTO on your tractor? Just about any implement will be, uh, that's category one and size, that's the right horsepower um, for uh, the, impl the uh, tractor. The two that we're offering now are category one. This E70 will be a category two uh, implements. And the uh, E Farmer will be category one. What is the GPM of the hydraulics that are on your tractor? The, um, Hydraulics are about seven uh, gallons per minute and 2200 RPM or 2200 PSI. Is it more efficient to run implements from the PTO or from let's say a third function valve uh, off the hydraulic system? For instance, let's say a brush hog would be a good example that you can get to uh, run off front hydraulics or off rear PTO. PTO is more efficient. It's run off the transmission and directly off the motor. Um, hydraulics are quite a bit less efficient. Uh, the ideal thing would be to have an electric motor on the implement that was um, that would be probably uh, five to ten times more efficient than hydraulics. Okay, tell us a little bit about the battery technology that's used on your tractors. We use lithium iron phosphate batteries that do not burn. Um, they're good for about 3,000 cycles, so uh, they're a very long-lived and, and uh, dependable battery. How long would it take to fully charge the batteries if it were connected to a 240-volt charger? Using a 240-volt onboard charger, uh, it takes about three to, to six hours to charge a battery pack, depending on which tractor. Um, they have different size packs, so somewhere between three and six hours. Is the charger included as part of the price of the product? Battery pack is included in the price of the tractor. There's also an offboard battery pack that is for the exchangeable packs, or they can be charged directly from a solar array. Now, I would imagine that one of the options that a person would have is to have an extra battery pack that's fully charged so that they could be interchanged if needed during the day. Uh, how practical is that to interchange the battery packs? Does that take a long time to do? It's an onboard battery pack which is only ch exchanged when uh, it dies. So probably it'd be more than 10 years before it would be exchanged and, and it just unbolts and, uh, and can be taken out and and hooked back up uh, with a new one. But we do also have exchangeable packs that can hook on to a three-point hitch. So if you have a three-point hitch in the front and one in the back, you can use the, uh, the implement in the back and balance the weight of the implement with a uh, battery pack on the front hitch. And the same with um, the opposite, um, having an implement on the front or a loader on the front balancing the weight with a exchangeable pack which exchanges just like an implement on the uh, back hitch. How do you measure the life expectancy of a battery pack? Is it done in hours, in years, or the number of times that it's been recharged? How can somebody figure how that battery usage is going to be? It is uh, measured by cycle life, and uh, these batteries, battery packs have a 3,000 to 3,500 uh, cycle life, which means uh, 
could, could be anywhere up to uh, 10 or 12 years of, of life on the battery, depending on how deep you s recycle them. When the batteries have to be replaced, what kind of cost could the customer be looking at to replace the batteries? Battery pack runs about $7,000 now. Um, the price has been dropping, so uh, probably by the time you need to replace the, the pack, it'll be a lot less than that. Tell us about the availability of your tractors, where they're being sold now, and how you see things coming down the road in the future. Our tractors are currently available throughout North America. Um, we have sold one in Europe as well. Um, we're, um, this, the compact electric tractor, we're mainly focusing on California and Canada now, but we plan to open up dealerships across the country. Are there presently any government incentives for using a tractor with an electric motor? In California, where we're based, there is a, a program called the Farmer Program run through the California Air Resources Board that pays for 80% of the cost of replacing a polluting diesel tractor with a zero emission electric tractor. Where do you see the future of electric tractors in the next 5, 10, or 15 years? I see a great future for electric tractors because people are going to realize that um, they have maximum torque at zero RPM and the battery weight is an asset. Um, diesel tractors don't come up to maximum torque till about 2000 RPM. So uh, compared to electric, um, which has maximum torque all the way through the slow speed operating range, diesel are much less efficient and some of the new uh, pollution controls that are going on diesel tractors are actually limiting their efficiency and causing more greenhouse gas emissions, which is going to be a big problem in the future, and I think people are starting to realize that. And what's the best way for somebody that's interested in an electric tractor to get more information? You can always go to uh, www.selecttrack.com and uh, check out our website. We've got uh, videos and all the spec sheets available on the website. And we also are doing a crowdfunding campaign right now, which we'd be happy to have you become part owners of the company. Steve, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to come and chat with my audience about some of these things. I know a lot of us are wondering about electric tractors and whether or not uh, there's a future form in our own lives. So thank you again very much. Take care. Thanks for having me.